obviously you've got a very intelligent man as prime minister, and I don't want to belittle him in any way. But you know what you had with Lawson, Howe, and Joseph. Joseph was a very important figure. Were people who really were prepared to consider the fundamentals and change things quite radically. Your memories of, of Nigel Lawson, uh, I mean, clearly, I mean, Danny Finkelstein described him about an hour ago on the show as uh, one of the most influential politicians of the 20th century. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. I think he was an absolute titan. And if you say why, I'd say because in every aspect of what we call Thatcherism, whether it was fighting inflation, privatisation, the city of London being opened up or reducing the size of the state and cutting taxes. He was really a seminal force in every one of those issues. I'm not saying he did it alone, obviously, Geoffrey Howe, Keith Joseph, Mrs. Thatcher herself, but he was a real moving spirit behind much of it. Uh, what was it that he had that maybe other politicians don't have? Well, he had a very powerful brain. Mind you, that coalition of ministers with Geoffrey Howe and Keith Joseph were a very high-powered lot indeed, but they didn't just accept the conventional wisdom. They were prepared to sit down and question it. They were prepared to take on the uh, accepted conventional wisdom that inflation was caused by workers pushing up prices, and they were saying, no, it's within the power of government and the central banks to control the supply of money, control demand in the economy, and drive inflation down in that way. Is it, I mean, that was a very important intellectual breakthrough, but you had to have the intellectual breakthrough before you had the breakthrough in terms of policy. It's it's remarkable that someone who was so so much the uh, one of the big brains and architects of what we now call Thatcherism, ultimately ended up falling out so spectacularly with Thatcher herself. Well, when you say so spectacularly, I'm not sure it was spectacular. He fell out really for two interrelated reasons. One was Margaret believed that Nigel, and indeed he had, in terms of the currency, had been shadowing the Deutsche Mark and hadn't kept her fully informed. Nigel felt she knew this perfectly well or should have been able to see it just by looking at the data she had. But more importantly, but also in a sense trivially, he was annoyed by the fact that she had her own special economic advisor, Alan Walters, of who was going around the boardrooms of the city disagreeing with Nigel, and he felt that placed him in an untenable position. So that was why he resigned. I tried very hard to persuade him not to resign because I thought the issue was not so important, and really he could have stayed on. But he'd been Chancellor a very long time, and yeah. I think, to be honest, I think he was looking for a way out. Uh, and just finally, we've heard a lot, Rishi Sunak posted when he moved into the uh, Treasury's Chancellor, he put a picture of Nigel Lawson on the wall. Other other politicians uh, making similar points today. Is there anyone in politics today, you think, who matches his his intellectual powerhouse, really, what we saw in the 1980s when he was Chancellor? Do you mean active in politics yes, today? Yes, yeah, yeah, today. I, I don't think there's anyone got uh, the same intellectual horsepower who wants to change things radically. I mean, obviously, you've got a very intelligent man as prime minister, and I don't want to belittle him in any way. But, you know, what you had with Lawson, Howe, and Joseph, Joseph was a very important figure, were people who really were prepared to consider the fundamentals and change things quite radically.